Okay, this is the way to look on strong and weak acids, which is what we're going to be testing here for procedure two of the acid-base lab. So if you look up here, you'll see hydrochloric acid, a strong, uh, actually, this isn't hydrochloric acid. This is hydrogen chloride, okay? Hydrogen chloride. So there's your hydrogen chloride. Now, as soon as we put him in water, since he is strong, he will ionize 100%. Now, let's look at what that means in terms of molarity. If I am one molar HCl, as soon as I get into the water, say one molar, as soon as I get into the water, I'm going to form these two guys 100%, which is why the molarity of the hydrogen chloride is zero. See, it goes to zero, from one to zero, because it ionizes completely, forming ions. So, who would like to tell me, what is the concentration of the hydrogen ion going to be well, as soon as I put the hydrogen chloride into water? Anyone? Go, uh, Ricky? If you put one more of HCl, you can have one more of Exactly. So, what's going to happen? We're going to have a zero molar hydrogen ion before we start, right? And so, hydrogen ion now is zero at the beginning. As soon as we get over here, because we're putting the hydrogen chloride into water, we get a one molar. And, what do you think, Ricky? What are we going to have for our, hydrogen chlor or for our chloride ion? It's going to go from zero to a one molar, right. Okay, and now because these guys here will conduct electricity and this guy doesn't, bingo, we've got this situation. And the light bulb will get very bright, yeah, because it's a one molar solution. So, let's go ahead and see that. So, let's go ahead and test that out. Here I have my hydrochloric acid. What is your expectation? Very bright, huh? Yeah. Are you really committed to that? No. Well, let's see. Here it goes. Okay. Woo! Okay, look at that on the screen, on the recording. Wow, that's really bright, isn't it? Very big old bright guy. All right. So, that's what the indicator is for a strong acid. Now, now we go to the acetic acid. He is a weak acid. So, he is going to start out, okay, here's our acetic acid down here, he's going to start out as a one molar solution when I put the acetic acid into water. But because he's weak, he's going to drop to a 0.98. Okay? And why is that? Because about one out of a hundred of these molecules is going to separate into its ions. So, Vince, what is your prediction? What will the what will the molarity of the hydrogen ion be? I'm going to put this acetic acid, one molar, okay, into water. What's the concentration of the hydrogen ion going to be if I wind up with a 98% solution of the acetic acid? Okay, what's the hydrogen ion concentration going to be? Oh, come on! Where did this go? It separated. Okay, 0.02% of this stuff. Okay, 0.02% of this stuff is now separated into hydrogen and acetate ions. Point what? 0.01, or you might think of that as 0.02 actually, because, yeah, that, well, it, it's really 0.02. I thought the same thing and I wasn't thinking straight because each each point O2 of of the acetic acid is going to give point O2 of this and this of course would also be point O2. Does that make sense? Because so what we end up with is point O2 molar this and point O2 molar that. Just like here we wound up with uh, back here, 0 0.02 molar of this, 0 0.02 molar of this, this acetate ion, 
or up here we went from one molar and we got because a hundred percent of it separated we got one molar of the hydrogen and one molar of the chloride. Does that make sense now? Okay. So let's test it out. So we're going to test it out with our acetic acid. So acetic acid is sitting right here. Let's test this little dude out. What's your expectation? Okay. There it is. Okay. Hardly getting anything there, huh? Okay. Very, very weak. So it's one one hundredth the conductivity, roughly one one hundredth the conductivity of the strong acid. Okay. So we've just seen how that little dude is going to work. And let's go on back and let's look at the ammonia situation. And let's see if I can get this to go back. Let's stop playing. So with ammonia, oh look, does that look familiar? Okay, down here with ammonia now, we have a one molar going to 0.98. Okay, and Leslie, what is your prediction with what the ammonium ion concentration is going to wind up being? Yeah, but what is it going to be? What's the number going to be? We 0 0.02. Very good. Okay, and I've got to fix this one too because I had this wrong. Just like Vince did. <laughs> okay, yeah. And then your prediction over here going from 0 to what? Yeah, 0 0.02 again. And I will fix that. And let's test it out and see exactly what happens. Hopefully we'll get straight back. And we did. And now let's look at the ammonium. And here's my ammonium solution. What is your prediction, Leslie? What do you think? Mm -hmm. It'll be weak. Okay, let's check it out. I hope you're marking this in your data sheets. Oh, there it is. There it is. Can you see it? Yeah. See, it's, it's getting up there a little bit. If I get it deep, if I get the electrodes deeper, it gets a little bit brighter because there's more solution to conduct ions between the electrodes. So there, I think we can see it pretty well on the recording, which is important. That's what I wanted to show for sure. Okay, now I'm going to do the sodium hydroxide test. Vincent, what do you think? Vincent, I'm sorry. Vincent, what do you think? We've got a sodium hydroxide. Strong or weak base? Strong base. So what do you think it's going to do? Bright or dim? Bright. Just like the hydrochloric acid. Yes. Good prediction. All right. You've done it, folks. That is your demonstration between strong and weak. And it happens with both acids as well as with bases. So... We've got it. There you are.